Hey, welcome back, Wizards. What do you say today we take a look at what a couple people are calling the best LPVO on the market? Today we'll be reviewing the Primary Arms PLXC 1-8 LPVO with the M8 meters and Griffin mill reticles. And just to show you all how crazy it is, I had a buddy who was just learning how to shoot, actually do all the shooting footage for this review, and it's pretty crazy. So let's get into it. Now, before we get to that range footage, I wanna show you the actual optic up close. Now, I can be a little bit long-winded with these reviews, so I'm gonna try and shorten it down, but then still bring you all the magic and still a good bit of my complaining. And some of the laughing too, because it really pisses off the small subset of people that just, I just love making them angry. So let's start with the one by eight PLXC and go over whatever the heck that means. The PLX in the name means this is the platinum tier, and it has the highest level of glass and components Primary Arms offers. The C is the most interesting part, as it stands for compact. With an astonishing 9.3 inch length and 17 ounce weight, it does what no other company has been able to achieve. And some of you may be confused as to why you'd want a compact LPVO, but in reality, the size and the weight are the main things you're trying to overcome when switching over from a full-size scope. And while you make a lot of trade-offs moving from a full-size scope to an LPVO, size and weight do plague pretty much every full-size scope out there. So by making the PLXC as small and light as possible, you're really able to offset a lot of the negatives of an LPVO when compared to like a red dot and magnifier or full-size scope setup. The PLXC is also first focal plane, meaning the optic changes size as we move through the magnification ranges. This means you have an industry leading 1X reticle that transforms into a fully featured weapon system as you magnify all the way to 8X. With the Raptor M8 meters reticle giving you a full BDC and the Griffin reticle giving you a full mill grid Christmas tree. So that's the basics of the scope that we have, but let's keep this pace going and let me show you everything that you get when you order it. No, it's not like an unboxing. It's like a fast forward and show a couple things. You'll see. All right, let's do an unboxing, but tell you what, let's just speed it way up. So here's our box. You can see everything that comes with it. You get this pretty cool primary arms foam with it, actually. Uh, then you have all your instructions. Uh, oh, look at this, another cleaning cloth. Uh, all your instructions, I'm gonna speed up even more for this. You need to go through these. They have these online though. You can download them both for the reticle and the scope that I'll show here. Look at these when you order your scope, learn all about it while it's coming in. You're gonna need to know all those details. Uh, here's a cool little sunshade for it. That's rare to see this for an LPVO. And then all your tools you need and your batteries and such. They come with everything you need. Uh, then we have the tactical cap cover. I'll go over this later, but you can change out the covers if you want to. Let's get the actual scope out. Uh, you have these bikini covers. I don't know if I love these. I don't hate them. They work, but I don't, they're not my favorite. Uh, then we have our diopter, which is pretty nice. We have our magnification throw lever. Now I did switch this out to the nicer one with the uh, flip down and flip up uh, articulations. That's a lot nicer. And then I have the uh, PLX cantilever mount. This is really nice. This also comes from primary arms. It's lightweight, it's stout. It's just really nice. Overall weight, fully assembled of 23 ounces. So there's a very quick showing of what all comes with it. But there are two wildly different reticles that we have here that do two wildly different things. So let's take a look at them and I'm gonna show you some different applications that they each do well at. Here, let's put these two reticles side by side with the M8 meters on the left and the Griffin mill reticle on the right. And someone's gonna ask me, yes, they do also make the M8, what, not meters, one in yards. And do I recommend that? Yes, I do, because as Americans, I don't know what the heck 200 meters is. But moving on, at the 1X setting, both the Raptor and Griffin reticle are extremely similar. They both have stadia lines at the three, six, nine, and 12 o'clock positions to easily draw your eye to the center CQB ring. The ring combined with the stadia lines makes rapid engagement easy from novice to experienced users. Moving both reticles to 8X, we start to see how each of them transforms. The Raptor M8 meters has a fully featured bullet drop compensator for the various distances in meters. 
Now you may want the reticle that comes in yards, but just know the yards reticle for some reason doesn't have like the nifty running target holds. It's just, it's just mildly disturbing. That's a con though. But included with those are also proper wind holds for five, 10 and 15 mile per hour winds. Included also is horizontal ranging along the center of the reticle that aligns with the distance of a 16 inch target. So you could basically align the marker shoulder to shoulder and whichever one it matches up with is your correct distance and you could just take a shot. I'll also comment, it's a bit disturbing how fast and easy that is also. Along the sides are horizontal ranging for a five foot 10 inch male with a measurement for half sizes. Now, I think a lot of reviewers have said this is really odd or it's just too busy, but like I really got it the more I understood it because a lot of times you're gonna be measuring something's height and their actual, you know, the rest of them may be occluded and you can only measure from one position. Like, I don't know, riding a bike or dri God, driving a vehicle. And the half sizes allow you to line up with the bottom of their torso and get a proper distance estimation. Now let's move over to the Griffin reticle. Here we see a lot of similarities, but instead of a BDC, we see a full mill grid Christmas tree that travels down into the side of the reticle. This gives you the ability to quickly measure, adjust, and re-engage because you can visually see and measure just how far off the impact was. And there's been plenty of times we were out in the range and I took a shot and maybe I was like a half mil low and a half mil right. It's easy to just make those adjustments without touching anything on the turrets at all. With the BDC reticle, well, uh, yeah, that's gonna be some guesswork for sure. And I will say to take some time with the manuals if you do pick up these optics, Primary Arms does an excellent job of explaining the reticles in extremely fine details in this documentation. And I'm not kidding in that it would probably take me like an hour just to teach you how to use that reticle effectively. So I'm not gonna do that. And instead, I'm just gonna show you some really good use cases for each of those different reticles. For the M8 meters reticle, I found this works best on standard size barrel links with standard 5.56 ammo. The included manual also includes windage and elevation for various barrel lengths. Wait, how did I just notice this BDC is for 62 grain 5.56? Who uses 62 grain? But having a reticle with that BDC built in means you don't need to have like a dope card or remember special stuff at special distances. You really just need to know the distance to the target and then line it up and engage. The Griffin Mill reticle on the other hand is suited for odd calibers and odd barrel lengths. I used the Griffin on my 20 inch 6.5 Creedmoor setup as that barrel length combo is generally longer in most Creedmoor BDC reticles. So moving away from the BDC, the mill grid then allows me to have like a shorter 6.5 Creedmoor like battle rifle setup, just a much more smaller compact platform. But then I do have to use like a dope card and just measure where everything's at. But then once I've got it, I'm all set. Easy way to remember it, standard barrel length and standard caliber, use the Raptor BDC. Odd barrel lengths, odd calibers, use the Griffin Mill reticle. It'll be a lot easier. Good grief, I'm trying to keep this brief. Okay, let's do, what is? what are we doing next? I'm not keeping it very brief. We need to do some tests before we go out to the range, so let's test turret rotation. On the PLXC, you're gonna find these nice knurled caps that cover the turrets. The turrets have an extremely nice spacing between adjustment and give you a solid feel and audible sound on each click. I never had any issues going past or to my intended position, nor did I find there was any slop at all in the turrets themselves. The turrets also have an extremely fine adjustment of 0.1 mils of travel for each click. And for those mathematicians out there, that equates to about 0.3 inches at 100 yards, so there's plenty of precision to get a really, really fine zero on this optic. And accidentally, I'll show you how easy this was. We actually zeroed the rifle and then it took a tumble onto the concrete. So we had to do another quick zero, which was nice and easy to do. Surprise, durability test. But the, uh, the turrets made zeroing easy, both times. Oh, you can also install the exposed tactical turret if you wanna be able to make turret adjustments on the fly also. I don't entirely see the point of having that though, particularly with the really nice ACSS reticles, but it's an option for those of you like mayonnaise and banana people out there, I guess. 
Moving to the illumination, we again see the fine knurling on the illumination control. The knob offers you 10 different illumination settings that vary from possibly usable with like a night vision clip on to a usable level of daytime illumination. Oh yeah, and some donkey mouth is gonna ask me if it's red dot bright. And that's really only possible, like with the Nova, the new primary arms Nova and like the Vortex PST Gen 2, that's really only possible with like a fiber optic and a second focal plane reticle. So you can have that, but you just need a way worse optic than this one. And to be totally honest, the Stadia lines make seeing the reticle so easy, it makes the whole like, is it red dot bright? It kind of a silly conversation. Now though, the PLXE does use shake to wake on the illumination. So it turns the illumination off after you set it down so you don't burn through a ton of batteries. And again, 2032 batteries don't last very long, which is why red dot bright is not the smartest thing ever. So it's cool to see them add a feature in that extends the life of a very short life battery. Plus, if you pick it up in the middle of the night, you don't have to fumble with the knobs to have a nice, bright, visible reticle. Now, do I wish more bits of the actual reticle were illuminated? Yes. Is it still better than every other LPVO on the market? Also, yes. Let's keep moving and look at eye relief. I think this is actually just exit pupil, but nobody cares. At 1x, we see what makes this optic just wow. The image just pops into view quickly and easily. Now, you'll note the small size of the bezel on the outside also, but we'll talk about that during the 1X testing. This was one of the rare few LPVOs that had an eye box that even comes relatively close to red dot performance. You often see far worse eye relief at 1X at twice the cost of even the PLXC. Moving to the 8X setting, we start to see some of those physics limitations of the smaller size scope housing. The 8X iBox is definitely tight, but I'd still call it usable. You start to see here, though, some of the trade-offs you're making when you move from a full-size scope. Like, for instance, it isn't nearly as forgiving as the Primary Arms 2.5 to 10 Griffin that gives you a way better iBox and more magnification. But somebody on the internet is going to go, yeah, but it weighs four ounces more. I don't know what sort of cake hands you have to have to be able to measure the difference of four ounces, but I guess they're right. Tell you what, we should do a PLXC versus the GLX 2.5 to 10 Griffin though. Nope, let's stay on target. Okay, let's do some 1X testing. Here in my yard, once I had the diopter dialed in, the 1X was almost a complete one-to-one. -one. The targets at 25 yards for me were hilariously easy to transition to and it gave a red dot-like experience when moving from target to target. I found the Stadia lines and center CQB made me track the reticle extremely easy. And in dark or bright areas, I never found myself losing the reticle with or without the illumination. The biggest notable thing here was also the field of view with almost none of the bezel visible. This gave a clear view that was completely unobstructed. And if you're gonna blow your friends away with just showing them one thing on this optic, it's definitely gonna be that 1X performance. Now though, we got one more test, so let's go check out the actual glass quality of this thing. Now, here you're gonna see some good glass, and it's actually good enough that you begin to see where the core LPVO fixed parallax design kinda of starts to fall apart. And hold on, just quick pause, I'm just saying that, okay, so every LPVO has a fixed 100 yard parallax and the high end components that are used here are really starting to show off the limitations of that design. I'll, I'll show you, let's keep going. So like, as you can see here, the 8X magnification, you can see out to 800 or 900 yards easily, but having our parallax fixed at 100 yards make those distances uh, significantly less clear. Focusing on further objects is much more challenging without focus control. Now, by making a small adjustment to the diopter, we can bring those longer distances into focus and get a more accurate representation of the PLXC glass. And kudos for Brass Facts for helping me get this all set up correctly.
he told me it was best to keep the diopter perfect for 1x and then just adjust it for that long range clarity as you need it. And his tip really did work well and I highly recommend you do it also. There's just one negative with that is that if you were to go to 8x and then have your diopter set, when you go, you can't quickly go back to 1x because then your whole view is just all wonky. And I just want you guys to realize that it's just the adjustable focus is a trade-off that you make by using an LPVO that you, you know, would normally have with the big boy scope. All right, I think it's time we can go ahead and hit the range next. Now, as I said, I have a buddy who's a relatively new shooter who I let do, I think almost all the shooting. I think I did like one thing for the testing portion. But basically, I did some coaching with him, taught him some basic principles, and then just let him rip. So let's get started. First, I set him up with some basic up-downs to let him get a feel for the optic. We're using an MDT shot timer that just works really well also, and it worked well for us when we we're out in the range. I was quite impressed with how well he was able to just pick up the rifle and really crank up the speed after going through a few drills. Good speed. Looking at the timer at the end, we were even able to see some really nice 0.54 second split times, and that just really shows off what this optic can do. All right, but that's just like, that's Instagram stuff. So next we set up with some multi-target, so let's see what he can do with that. Okay, do it. Oh, good grief. The reticle's out of focus. It just, uh, just know it looks really good on our end. And overall, I'm just extremely impressed. Dan took some basic instructions and then was able to really kind of show off what this reticle can do at 1x. Now, interestingly, Dan's never really shot much long range. I think he said maybe out to 200 before. So let's take him out to the 300 first and just get him a solid footing. For the long range portion, we swapped from the M8 meter 16 inch setup to our PSA 20 inch 6.5 Creedmoor configuration with our Griffin mill reticle. And first, I just let him rip at the target at 100 yards. Thankfully, I cleaned up the reticle. The range unfortunately took down the 300 yard gong for repair, but I had him shoot at the paper we saw out there at 300 yards. I don't know, it was pretty easy and it's not that fun when they took down the gong. So let's move over to the 600 yard range and really see if we can stretch his legs out. For the very first part, we set up and confirmed on the 330 yard target. Then you can see me learning the mill markers and walk in the 430 yard target. I just want you to see how the markers and glass quality made it really easy to see your adjustments and then where you need to move to for a follow up shot. Okay, I know, I know, let Dan have a turn. All right, here he is again. For the first shot, Dan raised up just a bit high. We did a bit of coaching and then he lowered back down to the right position and got it on the first try. And then he did some follow-up shots to show off just a bit. And yeah, it's 400 yards, it's super cool. Yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Let's move over to the 600 yard and see what he can really do. For this, I gave Dan the measurements and he made some basic adjustments for 600 yards and we just waited to see what happened next. Yeah, I heard it. Straight up, nice. do another one, three, five. Then at the end, we had some extra ammo. I think it just felt like showing off what he learned that day. Overall, it was just a total blast of a range day. And I was more than impressed how well it just transformed a new shooter from close range to multi-target to long range. From the PLXC Raptor doing rapid hits at both close and long, to our PLXC Griffin making long range shots and absolute breeze. Yeah, it was, it was ridiculously fun. So let's do some pros and cons though, and even 
<laughs> even picking out my pros is a little bit difficult. And brass facts, you're gonna hate me for this one, but my biggest, biggest pro is absolutely the reticles. From the Raptor reticle to the Griffin, you get some of the absolute best reticles on the market, giving you a full BDC or an option for a full mill grid while still offering you horizontal and vertical ranging at 8X that then transforms into a great reticle for fast acquisition at 1X. But I may be the biggest Griffin reticle fanboy on the planet, so maybe my opinion is just a little bit slighted. Now, I do wanna say my next big pro is definitely that C in the name, that compact form. The PLXC really personifies the LPVO by making it smaller and more compact than a full-size scope. The small size and weight brings you closer to the form factor of a red dot and magnifier setup that makes the PLXC equipped weapon system far faster and easier to use. Because if your LPVO is just big and heavy, then just use a scope. The trade-offs that you're making for nothing just absolutely aren't worth it. All right, one more big pro I wanna talk about is the amazing 1X and that just awesome field of view. If you buy this optic only for the 1X performance, I won't blame you. Here the PLXC just does incredible. The large field of view makes the bezel disappear completely and provides you with an almost red dot tier of performance. Eh, almost, well, uh, I'll put that big caveat on it, almost. It's close, it's close enough to say that. Now, I guess another pro, honorable mention to the controls, they're super nice, the overall build quality is good, uh, but there are some, see if I can figure out how to talk again, but there are some cons, so I don't know, let's talk about a couple of those. Now, I feel bad here because the con I'm gonna mention has a lot more to do with the LPVO design and it's not really a con for, for this optic. But it's interesting when suddenly you do everything right on an LPVO and it really starts to highlight the problem. So the con is long range clarity. Now, while the glass is capable, without a parallax adjustment, you're unable to focus the image which makes the glass seem significantly worse than it is. You need to adjust the diopter at range to get the same crystal clear image you have at the 1X setting. But as we mentioned previously, then you can't really change the magnification quickly because your diopter is now all screwy and just not set right. And it's really starting to show like this brick wall of the LPVO design. Like there's not really a whole point in super high-end glass if you have a fixed focus. And can you solve this problem if you pay three times as much? No, no, you can't. You're gonna run into the same exact physics problem with every single LPVO, no matter what the multiple of cost it is or whatever brand name is on there. But that's really the only con I had for this optic and it's the con for every LPVO out there. So I kind of cheated a little bit. And in reality, this is probably the best LPVO hands down I've ever used. So my final verdict is to absolutely look at this optic if you're dead set on an LPVO. The compact design makes for an ideal setup on a long range or short pistol build that is then paired with a full BDC or mill grid reticle, giving you the option to literally run it on anything you could imagine. And I'll warn you, this optic is so good that I don't think LPVOs can fundamentally get any better without like a core change to how LPVOs are designed from the ground up. Somebody somewhere is gonna add parallax adjustment to one of them and then all the other ones are gonna suck butt. <laughs> probably, could, probably could have said something more mature, but that's okay. I hope this review of the primary arms one to eight PLXC, Raptor M8 meters and Griffin mill reticle, I'm surprised I got all that right, was useful in your purchasing decisions. As always, I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon and YouTube members. You guys make all this possible and I love having you part of my family here at TLD. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what your favorite LPVO is and why it's the PLXC. All right, everyone, walk out. It's probably the craziest thing ever. This optic is so good. 
it made me realize like you can literally see, like it's so good. You can see where the limitations of the entire LPVO design is and really start to weigh like, are those trade-offs worth it? And that's kind of the conversation I'm having now. Like at that limit, is it better than a scope? Is it better than a red dot? I don't know. It's up to you. Sometimes, no. most of the time, no. All right, I'm going. <laughs>